this is okay. okay hold on. It's almost there. We go. Oh, oh right. Forgot to show off my. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Hello and welcome back to the 42nd episode, a very special Christmas episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, the show where we watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilgo. Kyle is hiding behind the stocking for some reason. I don't know why he's scared of you now, but he is. So, <laughs> joined as always by my co-host, my other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Today, we're talking about the 2006, I think, masterpiece of Christmas filmmaking that is Deck, Deck the oh. Halls. On your mark, get set. <laughs> Whoa! They're acting like a bunch of twelve-year-olds. <laughs> I know. Let's let's just. I can't. That was a little harmony. <sighs> yeah, it was. That was nice. We didn't even even plan that. It just happened. <laughs> Good. We're just that good, guys. All right. Uh, so, Deck the Halls. I don't know why we watched this movie, um, but it's a real piece of shit. Yep. <laughs> this this is one of those. It's it's one of those very. It's a cash in holiday movie. We got to get something out it for felt Christmas, like a Hallmark film that wasn't a Hallmark. Kind film. of. You know what it really is? It was in that exact. Um, and it's in the right time frame of when, like, all comedies were, like, meet the parents, basically. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they were all that same style of, like, super over-the-top, ridiculous, like, n nobody acts this way. I, I, I had no idea you could milk a cat. Oh, yeah, you can milk anything with nipples. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? It, like, what is the, what are these characters? Nobody is, behaves this way. Mm -hmm. Everything would, would it's like illegal. <laughs> like, well, everything it, they do is illegal. Yeah. Like it, it feels like the wackiest possible version of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it, that's the thing that's worst about it. It's like, the whole, and, and it's a comedy. You got to give it, you know, a little bit of leeway. But it's like, nobody would behave. No, humans don't no. behave this no. way. Yeah, how do you like that? Yeah, sleep through that, buddy. Which I get it. You're elevating. If you for were to behave effect. this way, you would be in jail. <laughs> yes, yes. No humans behave this way. So it's your basic, uh, your standard uh, new neighbors move in. We don't know them. Ooh, it looks like we have new neighbors. Who moves in the middle of the night? A meth lab? But at Christmas is their our main character's favorite time of year, and they do Christmas right. And the new neighbors come in, and they start doing Christmas, and then it's a Christmas off. What do you think of the tree for Winterfest? Well, well I, I, actually, Steve, I was talking to Buddy here. I mean, after all, he is the expert. Uh, usually a good sign when you see three people wrote a movie. That's oh, usually boy. when the credits pop up and oh, it's three. Boy. Which, that's what it was. It was three people sat in a room and go, we got to get this written by tomorrow afternoon at three. Let's go. Yeah, I sold my treatment <laughs> two months ago and they're expecting a script Friday. Yeah. So we got to get going. We're, I know, how much have you written? Uh, well, I wrote Deck the Halls. <laughs> That's it. All right, let's do it. Um, so uh, it's got a pretty good cast, or, or like an interesting cast, at mm -hmm. least, if nothing else. It's Matthew Broderick's the main character. His wife is What's-Her-Name from Sex and the City. Uh, I can never remember that actress's name. Um, and then the other two couple is Danny DeVito and Kristen Chenoweth. So there's that. And then there's also some little cameos here and there of interesting people. Oh, and his daughter is Aaliyah Shawcott or whatever from uh, Arrested, Arrested Development, Development and other things. By the way. Okay, we are just about ass to ankles back here, maybe. Do you want to hop on your cousin's lap there, please? Whoa, bumpy road ahead. By the way, Danny DeVito. <laughs> Like they're they're, they're real they're like you see them together on screen. You're just, every single time that she that she had to kiss him, I was like, yeah, oh she, no, she, he is out kicking his coverage. Like they there's say. a point where they're like doing a song at the end where David Vito's going in for the kiss, and she's like, I'm holding off on this as long as I can. I'll get my job back. <laughs> David Vito's lovely. How dare you? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the, the new neighbors move in, uh, but we get introduced to our main character first and he's, everybody in town loves him. 
uh, and he's like the optometrist, and he loves Christmas, and it's like their favorite time of year. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, don't go overboard with the lights, though. We don't want to seem tacky. Oh, whatever you say, Steve. Winterfest is your baby. And they have like a calendar of countdown events to the big day. He's a, he's a very, in, it's an interesting Thomas thing because he has his own private shop in this small town. Yeah. Which you don't, it like, unless this is like the 1800s and you're out in the the old west, that, that doesn't happen. Oh. You don't, you don't have, it, maybe. from my understanding, like every, every single one I've ever seen is in like some like a, like private a, practice yeah. doctor's complex. Yeah. I don't know. You see a guy. I'll go to like, the eye doctor. Go, you go to your eye doctor with a storefront window and you're just, What? <laughs> What? Some Wait. of them are like that. There's the one down here that uh, we have one. It's like a, I mean, it's a chain, but it's you know like lens crafters. They're their own store. They have an optometrist. Yeah, but are they like a storefront window? At the, I don't know. Uh, Maybe. Main street. I don't, I don't ever go to them because I have perfect eyes. That's not true. I need glasses. Uh. <laughs> I need glasses. You guys, at some point in the future, you're gonna see. I'm gonna have glasses all of a sudden. It's gonna I have be great. like negative six in both eyes, <laughs> and I'm looking through Coke bottles at this yeah. point. Yeah. No, they're they're sexy. <laughs> So I like how they, one of the things he whips out this big calendar, like an advent calendar, basically type thing mm-hmm. that they hang on the wall and they spin the little doors. And he goes, "On December third, we hang the wreath." December third, we hang the wreath. And they had no Christmas decorations up at this point. I'm like, no. do they put them up day by day, like on scheduled days? Well, as you may have noticed, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no. Wait, what? what they do you don't mean? even have christmas yeah what was that they I like they they like don't put up lights or anything mm-hmm. and i'm like wait what I don't, at least i don't yeah eventually they have a few maybe that just kind of show up but i was like he goes on the third we put up the wreath and i'm like who does that who like he's like and then on the fourth we put up one string of lights and then on the fifth we'll put up half of the christmas tree it's like what is nobody decorate you just do it all at once and get it out yeah. of the way um and for somebody who loves Christmas so much, they wait pretty far into the season to put up their Christmas stuff. Like most people who really love Christmas, it's like Thanksgiving, well, it's up. He doesn't just love Christmas. He's the Christmas guy. Yeah, he's the guy. I'm the Christmas guy. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's kind of my thing. He's in town. He is the Christmas guy, even though he's a giant asshole. <laughs> You should take it here in the sled. Oh, that's a yeah. great idea. Oh, that's take it in the sled. That, that's, that's a horrible that's idea. How's it feel to be invisible? Huh? I guess that means we don't have to go to the mall together. Hmm. Isn't that great? And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy doing the Yes. And I don't know why anybody likes him. He's even a dick to his customers. He's a dick to everybody. But his patients. Yes. It's like, I don't need glasses. You need binoculars. Yes. We're settling for glasses. <laughs> yeah. I don't need glasses. You need binoculars. We're settling for glasses. <laughs> it's like, I love, it's like, I get that, that his character arc is he's, he needs to, he's learning to, you know, to be more um, friendly. He's, he's like, the uh, but it's weird because they play it both ways where like he has to yeah. learn to like be friendly again, but also He's supposed to be everybody loves him. So it's like this weird, like, he's not like the Scrooge character, but he kind of is, yeah. while also being like well, the most... His is, he he sticks everything to such a strict schedule yes, yes. that he schedule has to and break tr- away from that. Schedule and tradition, and he has to break out of his... And if anything happens with that, all hell breaks loose. Yes. We always take our picture in front of the fireplace. It's a, it's a tradition. But wouldn't it be nice to try something new this year, honey? No, I don't yeah, think so. Okay. So we, we introduced this idea that his wife... Uh, that Matthew Broderick's wife uh, writes cookbooks, but that she doesn't write cookbooks. She says, I don't write them. I Are you going to finish your sip <laughs> so I can finish my fucking point? <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> um, this is the episode where they fight. <laughs> uh, and no, she goes, I don't write cookbooks. She goes, I take other people's recipes and then I change them and then put them together into a cookbook. You always say that I write cookbooks, but I don't. I just edit other people's recipes and then I compile them into cookbooks that nobody buys. And I'm like, you write cookbooks. Yeah, that's what, like, what do you think people that make cookbooks do? Not every person who writes a cookbook completely reinvents the art of cuisine every time. Yes. That, like, yeah, you took a recipe, you changed it and altered it in ways that you thought was good. the raw quail eggs isn't it it's the texture right the grainy slimy milky can you taste the curry yeah and then you put that's what people it, that's how your you cook whole thing was making recipes you would be a chef yeah 
<laughs> like I just and I'm like like you nobody there's no new like yes you can come up with new spins on things but that's what she said she was doing you're not reinventing all of culinary the world of culinary every like what that's not how cookbook okay yeah, so sure. just add a teaspoon of sea salt to everything and <laughs> that'll be enough today's secret ingredient is I like cuisine. and <laughs> we're back <laughs> all right there we go um yeah you just you write cookbooks that's oh they made me so mad i was like what are you talking about i don't understand yeah um <laughs> uh, so they uh uh devito and them move in in the middle of the night mm -hmm. uh devito and his wife chris and chinna within their two girls uh, who we'll talk about later, uh, move in uh, in the middle of the night, and they come uh, over to say hi the next morning. Um, and they walk out. <laughs> well, he's stealing his paper. Dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying yeah. To he's, he's trying to his... steal his paper. Yeah. And he introduces himself. Yeah. Oh, 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 take it easy. Oh, he's spazzing out on me. Look at me having a seizure. And this is just a meeting of uh, the, the husbands and wives. Yeah, husband and wife. Yeah. And, and Broderick's standing there in a gown in like a shirt and boxer shorts or whatever. And all of a sudden his wife is like, or Kristen Chenoweth is like, I can see your dick. Ah, looks like we got a visitor. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you, what? No, you can't. What? And he's like, oh, and she goes, oh, don't put it away on my yep. account. And I'm like, yep. don't put the little guy away on my account. <laughs> Wait, he, he's wearing, like, is, like, did he get a boner? Did he, like, pop a boner while they were having a chat? That's a very strange, because then he covers himself up. But I'm like, I look back, and I'm like, he's just wearing shorts. You can't see his dick, like, unless, did it sneak out the, the, the flap? Did it, like, what happened there? Ah, looks like we got a visitor. Did Matthew Broderick have a boner? That's what I want to know, ever. Has Matthew Broderick ever had a boner? Other than when he killed those... Oh, then we find out that uh, Danny DeVito gets, he's got a new job at a, uh, yeah. at well, a car because he's a salesman. Just, just to show you kind of what his character is. And yeah. He's kind of, he, he's presented as a very charismatic guy who kind of, I want to say he's a con man, but he's, he easily can manipulate people. Yeah, he's like a great salesman. Because he, and, he walks salesman, away yeah. with Matthew Roderick's paper. Yeah. And his coffee. Yeah. <laughs> kids right we do well. <laughs> yeah yeah they kind of yeah they paint him as like a smooth talker and but he keeps but he wants something more in life he doesn't want to just be a sale you know he doesn't want to just be like he's gifted with this ability to sell anything to anybody or you know kind of mm -hmm. talk his way into any end situation or whatever but he wants something more than that it's all the same i don't know i just hoping that you know one day I do something big something important which is kind of what they set up for this whole premise of what happens. So he's a salesman. We meet up, we see him at the, at the car dealership and this great scene, he sells a car to the owner of the dealership in like three words. I'm telling you boys from this day forward, we own that guy. Here we go. The brush off. That's brush, the brush off. off. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> and he paid sticker price. Yeah. He goes, and I paid sticker price. I'm like, I just bought one of my own cars. The worst part is, I paid sticker. And yeah, once again, that that actor who yeah, was, that what guy, is he he's, from? He's in everything. Oh my god, I knew that guy. And I something. thought for a second that was the dude from Office Space, you know, the O face dude. Oh, oh, it's not that <laughs> no, guy. It's not, no, though. Things go well. I might be showing her my O face. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, oh god, it looks like him with black hair. <laughs> We have to call the police. No way. I ain't going to jail. It's okay. I'm fine. We'll get rid of the bar. So, okay. So this is where he sells a car, but he like doesn't like selling things. He wants something bigger. And then we lay that night. Uh, his daughters, uh, we, at one point we made his daughters, uh, like, who has like twin 26 year old daughters, even they're supposed to be like 16 who, or 17. Or like, you know, supermodel height. yeah they're like six foot both like six foot tall and like gorgeous uh and uh what's the little boy's got a boner every time he sees him <laughs> oh. he's like oh my god can i live here and this is carter hi can i live here so his kids his kids at night are on google earth what do you got going here it's my earth you type in an address and you can see every house in the country from space. It basically. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's basically Google good. Earth. When I saw that, I was like, you can see any, anything live. And I'm like, nope. well, probably not nope. because that's not how satellites nope. work. Usually, but... uh, usually from about six months or a year ago. Yeah. But... <laughs> you can see every house from space? Yeah. 
Uh, so I was like that. The whole premise of what of this of this movie is bullshit. And now you obviously that that's the conceit they had to make to make the plot of the movie work. Yeah. But he so they go look. You can see anywhere on Earth from space from the satellites. And he goes, oh cool. Show it. Can you see our house? And they pull it up. And for some reason they're like, no, you can't see our house. But you can see the neighbor's. But you can house. see the neighbor's house. Which- Where's our house? Oh, you can't see our house, but you can see the neighbors. The figures were invisible. It's weird because they have the same size house. It's like a little bigger. The neighbor's house is, uh, Matthew Broderick's house is a little bigger. Not like, they're not in, Matthew Broderick doesn't live in a mansion and these people are in like a a hut. It is like a little bigger. But that's not, the thing that's hilarious to go, you can't see your house. You clearly could see, like, you can see a screenshot and it's like, if you can see any of the houses, you could see their house. Like, but, so his idea is, well, you know, if there was lights on it, you could see it from space. Well, they don't even have lights on there. No, it's just bigger, a little bit. None of this makes any sense. Cause yes, it's one, it's not how satellites work or, I mean, it is, but it's not, you don't see a live update all the time. That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. Uh, two, which I guess they kind of address later because it, in order for them to see it later, they have like a special Cal pen is there and he's like fucking (laughs) monitoring the situation live or whatever. Now the folks on my earth have been monitoring the situation live. So, but yeah, so I guess I do know it's not live. I don't know. Um, Two, the lights thing, you don't, that doesn't do, nope. You just can see the house because that's, oh, yeah, yeah. So anyways, none of the, the whole conceit of the thing is that he wants to put all these lights on his house so that the house can be seen from space. And that'll mean he really achieved something. See it from space. Light it up. You know, something other than just being a salesman. Look, look, if you have your expectations incredibly low, they're very easy to achieve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I just throw a bunch of lights on this house, woof, we can see it from space. That's why I have no expectations. I always meet them. Yep. So he starts putting up lights that night. And I swear to God, like, it, it, the sound effect, because he wakes up Broderick, it's a nail gun sound effect. Yes. And he's holding a hammer. Oh man. And is that is that supposed to be a joke? Or did the guys in the sound mix were just like, fuck it, just got like a Robocop arm? (laughs) Yeah, he's just got a hammer, but it's very clearly like that nail gun. (laughs) And apparently he's nail gunning uh (laughs) lights to his house. Just destroying his property value wise at it. Kyle Hinton, real estate expert. Yeah. So he puts all these lights on his house and Matthew Broderick comes out and goes, it's too bright. Oh, is that what's bothering you? The lights? Yes, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I'll, I'll turn them off. Thank you. And I'm like, I look at, it's like a very reasonable amount of lights at this point. It's like how most people would put light. Like, you know, yeah. if you did a pretty nice job of putting lights on your house and he's like, you got to turn these off. It's too bright. And I'm like, I thought you liked Christmas. You don't like this guy has very sensible Christmas decorations on his house. And you're like, fuck off. I'm like your barren <laughs> yeah, you know, two story mansion. House. <laughs> yeah. So he, he puts all these lights on. He goes back inside and, and he's like, can you see it now? Still can't see it. You're going to miss it. Sorry, daddy. What, what do you mean you can't see it? It's impossible. I put so many more lights on. And they're like, and I love that none of this is, makes any sense and it's so stupid that they can't even show the computer to show that we can't see the house. It's just them looking at the computer screen and going, nope, we can't see it. And he goes and looks at it and goes, ah, shut. You know, like, I guess they'll need more lights. But they can't show us the computer screen to see that we can't see it because you could, see, if they were actually looking at a satellite picture, you would be able to see the house. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't be able, like, it wouldn't make any sense. Okay. Oh, so then this is when the big uh, sledding incident happens. Oh, the Christmas. So he goes and he buys a bunch more lights and he also gets... He doesn't just buy a bunch more lights. No, he buys all of the lights. All of the lights. <laughs> all of the lights. Oh, hi. Can you order me more of these? Let's fuck everybody else in town. They don't get lights on their house. Um, 
And so, but he also, the guy just got in like this giant sled, like a legit, like Santa sleigh. Like it looks like an antique. Yeah. It's got like the metal runners and everything. Like it is a legit sled. And so he takes it home and he gets horses. Didn't just get horses. No. <laughs> he finds, finds them. them on the outskirts of town. Also, we should keep our voices down a little bit because I found these horses on the outskirts of town. And it, between you and me, they look a little skittish. And they are shooed. That is, Danny DeVito is like the best, yeah, they are. Danny DeVito is like the best part of this movie just because Danny DeVito is always kind of funny and everything yeah, he's he wacky. does. he's a wacky yeah. guy. And Kristen Chino is pretty good too. Matthew Broderick and uh, they're, he's terrible. Let's light this candle. And so, uh, so his sons, they're like, let's take the picture. And this is where it starts to, and I get that the idea is that like, oh, he doesn't want, he doesn't want the competition of, the new guy in town, uh, uh, you know, up in him on Mr. Christmas. But they're like, hey, we should take, and and his tradition thing, they're like, hey, we should take our Christmas picture in the sled. You're talking about your Christmas picture? Mm -hmm. You should take it here in the sled. Oh, that's a yeah. great idea. Oh, take it in the sled. That, that, that's a horrible idea. That'll be great. And he's like, no, fuck that. And I'm like, you're such a, like, even if you didn't want, you could take a picture yes. in it and then still go do take both. your, yeah, you could do both of them. <laughs> but it's got his character. He's such a stickler for tradition that they can't ever do anything new. Um, I'm like, why does anybody like you? I don't understand why anybody in this town likes you. That, that's, that's a horrible idea. He gets in there yeah. to kind of calm, I guess. To, to get the kid get, out, get, get his kid off, yeah. And they take off. Boom, gone. And then, and then we get a nice little uh, action sequence of him getting drugged through town. If you ever want to see a sleigh drift in the streets, <laughs> this is it. I you put in some sweet... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, well, who's the Fast and Furious, Fast and music. Furious music? But who's the who's the who did the song from? The, I was thinking of Need for Speed Underground. Right. Do you remember that game? What's the song in the? So he's slamming into cars and shit, and then eventually flies over a little kid who's like, Santa, woohoo! And his dad is oblivious to the sleigh flying yeah. over the top it's like, of the like, oh, car. we almost died. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Santa! Santa! It's real! I knew it! I knew it! Oh, sorry, you could have. I didn't want to. Okay. <laughs> we can take turns. We can go back and forth, Kyle. In the season of giving. <laughs> I'm sorry, is this annoying? Yeah, I need you to stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so eventually he ends up on a lake uh, and then stops sliding finally and then just falls immediately fall through. through. And I was like, the movie should just end there. He freezes yep. to death and drowns, which he would have because there's nobody. And there's one fisherman sitting on the ice, like, you know, on the other side of the lake. Nobody's getting, he's freezing and sinking and dying. <laughs> like, he's, they're not getting him out of that no. lake. Maybe they, maybe that's what happened, and the rest of the movie is, like, a Jacob's Ladder scenario. <laughs> it was a reference to a reference, but any of our How Did This Get Made fans will know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, so maybe he did die there. But anyway, so they, they... Uh, well, he's he, coming to in oh, the van right, to yeah, the hospital. Yeah. yeah. And he is stripped down and getting warmed up. By Danny DeVito in what feels like it is absolutely pulled out of an Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode. Yeah, yeah, with Danny DeVito's <laughs> character, yeah. Where are your clothes? I had to get your body temperature up, so I stripped us both down and zipped us into this sleeping bag. Trust me, it works. So he's fine that he lives, I guess, or he doesn't. Jacob's letter. One of the two. Um... <laughs> And uh, I don't remember what happens next, but at one point he's he gets home and he's talking to his son. And I just love, it's like he's the worst person because his son's like, hey, I was hoping we, can we go to the mall and get a present for mom and like hang out? Maybe you could take me Christmas shopping for mom. We could go to the mall 
and wander around. Oh, and we can get hot chocolate. And you know, and you can love me and stuff. And he's like, yeah, no. You know what? Already taken care of. You're getting her a really nice sweater that I ordered from a catalog. Oh. I guess that means we don't have to go to the mall together. Yeah. Isn't that great? <laughs> no. No. He goes, I ordered. I ordered I, her. I wanted to put some thought into mom's gift. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. Fuck you. I ordered her something for you. And it's like, what? I get the character, but like, why did anybody like this guy? He's the worst. No. So they go to get to cut down the tree now the next day or something like that. He has a series of trees that he's been growing they have their, for years. 15 years. They have their own plot at the tree farm that is like sectioned off just for them because they're those assholes. Mm -hmm. Apparently optometrists make real good money. Who knew? Especially in small town optometrists. Uh, so he, do the optometrists have to get a medical degree? I don't think so. I feel like they just like let anybody do it. Fine medical expert. <laughs> just wondering like i was thinking about it. i was like i'm pretty sure they just i mean all they do is like use a machine to see if your eyes are fucked i don't think they need any medical <laughs> training <laughs> this coming from a guy who does not see an optometrist like ever when's yeah. the last time you went to see one? Oh god a long time ago they put the they poked they did that thing have you ever i hated that i blew some air well to your no eye. They, well there's that but no they used a thing like a rubber thing to push on my eyeball to like test the like resistance That's or something my eyes water yeah yeah no but they put an eye drop in and then it's like and it's like to test like the how firm your eye is to make sure your eyes like firm the proper i don't know what they do if it's not firm enough but I don't, it was anyway it was very strange but that was like 10 or 15 years ago so I don't know. devito and them are also there they're going to get their uh, their own tree somewhere else and as he's walking away he accidentally knocks over a can of gasoline and then somehow in the snow hilarity ensues yes hilarity ensues in the snow this gasoline manages to run all the way What's the among all the trees. Mm -hmm. It's also a very small can of gas, and it run and it like a fucking river of it comes out to engulf all these trees. Also, nobody smells it except for um, Sex in the City, <laughs> Broderick's wife. Does anyone smell gas? And I'm like, if you're standing, if he was like he was standing in the middle of all of that gasoline, it would be very apparent. Like, you would mm -hmm. know. But anyways, he's like, fuck it. Makes a sweet joke well, about no, farting. No. And then <laughs> he's in a competition with Danny DeVito right. so he can get a tree down. Right. Back. Yeah, that's right. And then he was going to let his son chop down the tree and just. <laughs> he's, he's the worst he's asshole. He's a horrible he's father. He's a horrible father. Give me the axe, Carter. No way he beats us. Honey, you said he could cut it down. Well, he can do it next year. Come on. Give me the axe. And the cats in the cradle and the shoes He says, give me that axe, we're gonna beat him. <laughs> yeah. But dad, I was wanting to screw your Fuck childhood you, memories. <laughs> Whatever childhood memories you're gonna have of having a good childhood, guess what? Yeah. Not happening. Nah. <laughs> Fuck you. And so he goes to chop it down, and then hits like a he hits a piece a, of rebar metal or yeah, yeah. Or something, and then sparks, and then boom, all the trees go up in flames. <laughs> Hilarious. <gasps> And then so they end up, of course, because there were no other Christmas trees in town. They get the Charlie Brown They Christmas. get a Charlie Brown Christmas tree because, again, this isn't reality where, you know, <laughs> yeah. there are other trees. Oh, and then Hurley shows up. Excuse me. Wallace well, Fiskin. Oh, Buddy Hall, sir. Meeting you is one of the great moments of my life. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, fucking Hurley is in this movie. Uh, what, what's the actor's name? Something I don't Garcia, I right? couldn't. Yeah, something. Yeah, I couldn't tell you for the life of me. He's we're, Hurley. We're sorry we don't know you, man. You're Hurley. <laughs> we, can do, uh, we can do a continuation of Law. Somehow he survived the plane crash. Yeah. Uh, and, well, I, yeah. And then he, He's, opened, uh, he got back from the island. Yeah, and then he opened up his own. Uh, what does he do? It was a, he owned like he owns like part of a fried chicken restaurant chain or something. Like oh that. well, that's yeah. That was in. Uh, well, that's yes, yeah. That's what happens in the show. But um. No, in, uh, in, in a good cop, bad cop. Yeah, good yeah. cop, bad cop. There's the, the like the guy yeah, at the strip club. A, that's a throwback. That's second episode, I think. Here's the here's the the tagline. It takes one to know one. Two worlds. One. Okay, there's two taglines. I'm not sure which ones. Good cop, bad cop. It takes one to know one. Two worlds, one border, no boundaries. So that's 
exciting third yeah, second, second. Uh, and there's a guy in Good Cop Bad Cop which a lot of you probably haven't seen because you've watched us not since when we first started two, mm. three years ago or whatever uh, there's a guy who eats a, a bucket of chicken and he looks just <laughs> like Hurley we were, we were like is that Hurley and I was like uh, and then I saw he's like holy shit that's Hurley and he's eating fried chicken just like his character does. But it's not actually Hurley. It's just, the guy it's, that, it's not it's, actually it's the like guy that plays It's just like a 400-pound dude. Yeah, but, with like curly, blonde, long, dark hair. And he's sitting there eating a bucket of chicken. Yeah. Which, if you watch Lost, Hurley eats a shit ton of chicken and then eventually buys a chicken restaurant <laughs> because he loves it so much, I believe. I haven't seen it forever. And so they, he talks about, the, Hurley tells him, or is talking about how there's always the annual speed skating competition. Yeah, races? What yeah, kind of races? Speed skating. Speed skating. Speed skating. We do it right here. Because that's a thing towns do. They yeah. have speed skating competitions in the town square. <laughs> All right. Um, and then I don't remember what else happens in this movie for the rest of it. <laughs> No, no, I do, I do. Uh, so he puts up even more lights at this point. I think this is once he starts, um, like, and like soldering, like, yes, giant like switchboards. And, and keep in mind, keep in mind, they are in massive debt. That is something that's yeah. brought up. You are. You're going to pay off our monumental debt. So they're in massive debt, but he's spending thousands of dollars on on lights and yeah. sound systems and everything and apparently he's a genius programmer because he just programs his own shit yeah and he's, like i said he just solders everything he programs everything and like i'm like he, they should have set that up if they wanted to he knows how to, he knows how to uh program his own stuff but he doesn't know how to use google earth you know, run a sequencer on the lights buddy synchronize it to the music are you Come on. get that satellite image up that you had before yeah yeah it's like what's this google earth you got going here i'm gonna make the world's most impressive light show <laughs> later in this movie um like because it's legitimately incredibly impressive <laughs> And, and, oh, this is so. After the first one, he 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 starts up and he gets a big light show going. A bunch of people show up and there's music and it's synced together. Oh God. And and our guys all like this is the worst and it would be the worst because the music is blares at all hours of the day, which is not allowed. And there's like hundreds of people just in the street. Dude, Four a.m. every night. <laughs> yeah. This show is going to be repeated every night on a loop. Until 4 a.m. Yeah, well, that, that's for sure later. He goes till 4 a.m. every night. And it's like, nope, that wouldn't be allowed. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, he decides he's going. Well, and this is at one point, him and his wife are sitting out in the sleigh. Uh, DeVito and, and Kristen Chenoweth are. And the movie decided halfway through the movie to acknowledge how stupid the premise of their movie is. They literally say <laughs> to each other. I guess the light thing is pretty stupid, isn't it? This is really stupid, isn't it? And she goes, he goes, see in our house from space? That's kind of a stupid idea. And she goes, yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> yep. Well, like, at least they're admitting it. At least the movie, they got to have, they got to The question is, do you think that was a writer's choice? <laughs> or halfway through it where they realized they were screwed in the script? <laughs> or was that an actor's choice where they read it and they're like, what the? Yeah. And it's just DeVito, and they're not even in character. It's just DeVito and Jenna with sitting in the sleigh and they happen to have a camera rolling on them. And they're like, this is... Senior, what are we doing? What is cut perfect? That's brilliant. Um, oh shit. <laughs> yep, no, that was exactly. What, yep, I guess the light thing is pretty stupid, isn't it? So then, uh, one of the nights, uh, Matthew Broderick decides he's gonna go Mission Impossible. Oh, Let's light this candle. What are you doing? The number of of skin tight suits that we see Matthew Broderick in in this too movie. many. Yes, I've seen more of Broderick's physique than I ever cared to. Oh, oh. very nice, very nice suit. What I'm saying is that I don't want to see old <laughs> old Matthew Broderick's curves at all anymore. I'm not a big fan. He. Mur So he goes over in like a in like a, his made up uh, Mission Impossible outfit, but he gets his son to come along because his son so desperately wants to be loved by Dad, him. Dad, I want some attention of some. <laughs> He'll do illegal things with him. <laughs> yes. You're 
gonna cut his power, aren't you? You gonna look out? <laughs> Just so he has some form of attention from his father. So he's the lookout, and he yes. climbed <laughs> a telephone pole. a transformer <laughs> like he is like right next to it thanks for being responsible dad i know i'm like you're the worst father in the history of the world and they kind of acknowledge it in this scene but anyways so he's a lookout for him and they're on a walkie talkie and he's sneaking in there's a hilarious gag where he's hiding up and down behind a, a santa that's going in and out of a because you couldn't yes. just crouch you would have to go up and down oh, with God. it And then he dives into a live manger scene. Yes. Where they have a camel that just shits and spits and throws it's, up everywhere. It, yeah, and it spits banana pudding all over his uh, face. No, get away from me. And then so eventually he gets to the breaker box and he throws a snowball into it. Yep. And because the wiring does not look up to code. No. I don't know a lot about what, no. but it does not look up to code. They like burn the whole neighborhood down. Uh, but so it fries it and all the lights go out. And then, but... Danny DeVito's one step ahead of your motherfucking ass. There's a giant generator. A giant generator. <laughs> What's that noise? Oh, that? That's the Generac 3000 liquid cooled generator. Uh, that fires up. It's liquid cooled generator. He says. Yes. I don't know what that means. Which, if that makes you know, sense. Sure, you need that in winter in the northeast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it needs to be liquid cooled. It's out. It's in zero degree temperatures, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so then, it, but uh, so the lights are still, you know, it's all good. But Danny DeVito figures out that he did it because he finds the snow in the like the breaker box or whatever, and sticks his hand into all those wires. Well, I'm like, the, don't do that. Probably Finch. The next day, Matthew Broderick uh, walks to goes to work and he sees that where the tree normally is is no gone. tree it's gone it's been sawed off my favorite thing about this scene is there are four city workers just standing around it in a circle staring at it going uh, what, what are we supposed to do what are, and they're like pointing at it like somebody cut it down what and they're just <laughs> like what are you guys doing they took a chainsaw to it <laughs> yeah so somebody cut it down and uh matthew broderick has a sneaking suspicion of who it might have been because Buddy gave him a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Said, "Oh, look here, I got a Christmas tree Which for you." I don't know why he wouldn't have noticed it immediately because yeah. it has the Marilyn, the Marilyn Monroe, Monroe angel on top yeah. of it, which we saw earlier in the film. Yeah, I guess I'm maybe maybe Matthew Broderick didn't see it earlier. I don't know. And he has a car with a bow on it, which is a universal symbol. Oh yeah, for, here is your gift. Yeah. So he gets into his office and gets a letter from the dealership saying, "Pay it by Pay noon." Pay by noon. Yeah. Doctor Finch. This came for you from the car dealer? Oh, probably the uh, documentation. They say you have to pay for the car by lunchtime or you're going to be arrested. Or you'll be arrested. Oh, you'll be arrested. I'm like, I don't think that's how that works. What? But the, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Danny DeVito gave him a car and said it's a gift. Uh, turns out he forged his signature. You signed the contract. I didn't sign anything. No, that's true. You didn't sign anything. I had to forge your signature. Uh, and made him buy the car. And I'm like... I, no, but so Matthew Broderick goes to confront him at the dealership about this mm -hmm. and says, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go get my lawyer. That's it. That's it. We are going to settle this like men. Ooh. I'm going to contact my attorney. Because you fucking forged my signature what? and made me buy a car. Not going to lie. That is the most legal thing he's probably yeah. done this whole <laughs> yes. movie. It is the only thing that makes sense in this entire movie, but it is followed up by immediately DeVito being like, Oh, you're going to contact your attorney. Is that the way you settle things like men? What's the matter, your mommy out of town? And and Broderick taking the bait like the grown man child that he is, because the right answer is, yeah, yeah, no, fuck you. I'm going to go get my lawyer, and you're going to be in prison for fucking forging my signature and buying a car <laughs> with my name. That's called fucking uh, fraud, dude. You cannot do that. Well, uh, for the record, this is where they're starting to rack up the illegal activities. Yes. Oh, my God. Because... I mean, Broderick, you know, he, he access, illegally accessed the panel. Yeah, of and the electricity box. And sabotaged, and sabotaged it. it, yeah. Danny DeVito has forged his signature, you know, committed fraud. Yeah. You didn't sign anything. I had to forge your signature. And destroyed city property. City property, yeah. Yes, and uh, his son, I'm sure children are not allowed to climb telephone poles and just hang out next yes. to Transformers. <laughs> That's probably some sort of, like, endangerment of a child or something like that. Uh, on top of like whatever it would be just for anybody going up a telephone pole they're not allowed to go up and then but yeah so it starts adding up so instead of 
selling it like adults because otherwise we wouldn't have a comedy uh is they decide instead of getting lawyers involved they're gonna race over it speed skating there is an ice skating race yeah yeah great idea and i'm like dan devito no look at you <laughs> no you're not gonna win that race but there the stakes are if i win if Broderick wins uh He's got to take the car back, or no something. No, he's got to buy the car. No, well, if if Devito wins, if Devito wins, he's got to buy the car. Broderick's got to buy the and car. If if, if Broderick, Broderick wins, I don't. He remember. takes down the lights. You win, I buy the car. I win, you take down the lights. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You take down the lights. I guess lights. he still has a pipe. I don't know. I'm like, you those aren't. You didn't. I was like, wait a second. Those, so yeah, those don't equate. Your 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 terms here are very muddy. Like I don't understand so I what we, happens. We do need to specify that the reason he needs he needs a new car is because his Volvo got destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Well, he destroyed it because he can't drive and is an idiot. So yeah, so they, they decide they're gonna race to settle this this dispute, um, and so they're at the like the little Christmas, whatever Winterfest or whatever it's called the next day, and they're playing like the games, and he hits the old lady in the face. That's great. <laughs> And I love, best line in the movie is kids, his son, because he's raising a little miscreant here because his son, after he hits that lady square in the face and like knocks her out cold, his son's like, he just winged her. That mean man knocked down the old lady. He just winged her. <laughs> nope, that's the ball nope, hit her right destroyed. in the face. Uh, oh, and then the worst scene in the entire film the Christmas dancing, the Santa girl uh, scene. It's the grossest uh, thing. Okay. So who thought this was a good so idea? So the wives get them together to kind of make nice. Yes. And they're like, well, we're men, so we're going to... We're going to be pigs. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to... Is it oogle or ogle? I, whatever. <laughs> And heck, like, like verbally abuse these women on stage. Like, yeah, who's your daddy? From the crowd, these girls that are dancing with their backs to the audience. Now that is something we could agree on. Currently. Yes. Wearing, like, the little Santa dresses, you know, like Santa dancer things. And, it, I mean, it's very obvious to everybody who's, you know, watching the movie what is about to happen here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're a guy, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Come on. Uh, hey. Hey, is it getting hot out here or is it just you girls? Oh, nice dip. But I'm like, and then so it, it turns around because he's yelling and the joke of the whole scene is he's yelling, who's your daddy? Ow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Woo. Hey, baby, who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's your daddy? And they turn around. And they and, turn around. Oh, God, I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. <laughs> yeah. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Oh God, I'm your daddy. And it's so, the grossest thing ever. And, and what I thought was the funniest immediate scene following that, they are rubbing holy water in their eyes to try yeah. to cure them. They're in church. I love the premise of the scene, though, is that it would have been fine had it not been their daughters. It would have been fine for two grown men to stand in a crowd full of families and be like, oh yeah, girl, get it. Like, just the... It's the weirdest, like most, and I'm like, this is their bot. Oh, that, yeah, that, yeah. that may have been more acceptable for the drunk guy the night before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you're at, they're at a family gathering in the middle of the day. Not, not only are, is that Matthew Roderick is a very well respected yeah. member of this community. <laughs> yeah. And I love that they're just all of a sudden decide, yeah, you're right, we're dudes. Let's just yell gross shit at these, even if they're not their daughters, they're supposed to be young, like teenage girls dating fucking most ridiculous oh my god i was like what is happening <laughs> Ow. yeah that's what i'm talking about Woo. hey baby who's your daddy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. who's your daddy oh that fucking scene oh, i'm your daddy oh, my oh god my god okay it's the skating scene oh it's the skating scene oh, okay. this is the race so it's it's the uh <laughs> It's Danny DeVito in his Detroit Red Wings jersey yeah. 
are two German <laughs> Fred Armisen and I can never that, that other woman I can't remember her name yeah, the German it's, it's couple the German couple the mayor, the mayor who's who in like who, who has like ski uh, poles yes and then they're waiting for Matthew Roderick shows he shows up in a full body suit a, f- a full body speed suit and it is uncomfortable it is even tighter than this vest fits me right now that thing is hugging that broderick bod because the only thing that's going through my head is stupid sexy flanders <laughs> yeah yeah it's like orange it is yeah 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 oh uh, i should have called him matthew bodrick i'm gonna cut that out <laughs> <laughs> um so they race uh and then at some point well, the mayor is like nearly killed <laughs> yeah, immediately. He falls over and knocks over Matthew Broderick as soon as the race starts. And so Matthew Broderick has to come back in, but he raced in college, so he knows what he's doing. Uh, although apparently he doesn't know that you can't just jump over and go the wrong way. Apparently that's still fine. Oh, no! oh, they go the wrong way! Because at one point he has to like avoid the mayor again, <laughs> not kill yeah. him. And he jumps over the thing and goes the wrong way around the track for half of it. Now the shape of the track, I guess he still went the same distance basically, mm-hmm. but that, I feel like he would still be disqualified if you did half of one lap backwards around the track. Uh, and then he jumps back over uh, and right as he's about to win, the German couple comes up and then something, ha- what happens? It's like he, they do this, the slingshot. Oh, they maneuver. do the slingshot from like roller derby. Yeah. <laughs> And they whip it. <laughs> they take out Bro- Matthew Roderick, and Danny DeVito just ends up winning because everybody else is yeah, on, the on the ground in yeah. horrible pain, yeah. probably. But Matthew Broderick snaps in front of the whole town and calls him pathetic or whatever, and oh, like, yeah. fucking berates him in front of everybody, and is like, "You'll all, you'll never amount to Once anything." Once again, Matthew Roderick is a well-respected member of this community for some reason. <laughs> Has a feel to be invisible. Huh? What? He's the biggest asshole in the world. <laughs> like, it's like if the movie was about him basically being Scrooge, it would make sense. But it's like he's being Scrooge, but everybody loves him and he loves Christmas, but he's still a giant. Yeah, yeah, fit there. <laughs> that makes sense. How much? Can you get it here overnight? Find out eventually Danny DeVito sold uh, Kristen Chenoweth's mom's urn. <laughs> yes. This is the stand to my vase. You pawned it, didn't you? You pawned my grandmother's vase. <laughs> because he needed more money for lights. Because they were already in debt for a bajillion oh, billion dollars. Th- th- okay, both these, this, like I said, a part of this feels like a, a always sunny in Philadelphia moment yeah. for all this because these are the worst people on the planet. They're all terrible. This is this is terrible. like a whack. This is like something out of a Seinfeld episode. Yeah. So uh, Matthew Broderick decides to get to buy a bunch of fireworks. Illegal fireworks. Illegal fireworks that he buys black market. I'm looking to do some serious damage. Yeah? Cool. And you come to the right place because I got enough firepower back here for two wars. <laughs> Whenever they had this scene happening, I was like, oh, God, is he going to hire a hitman to just to kill all of Danny DeVito's lights? It would have been lights? great. <laughs> to kill his lights? I thought he would kill have his, killed yeah, to kill, kill Danny DeVito. No, <laughs> kill his lights. He's going to go up to, like, the Santa and just, like, break its... Break that its would head. be way funnier. <laughs> That's a way funnier gag than what they did in this movie. If it was a... if it And you thought... Because they could set it up like he hired a hitman, and the guy could show up with a gun, but it turns out it's a BB gun, and he starts shooting the lights out with yeah. it, and he's, like, sneaking around, <laughs> breaking the necks off Santa. That's a way funnier funnier gag than what actually happens you just wrote a better movie than they hollywood, fucking wrote hollywood hire me yeah oh that's so much better i got reapers crackle dragons wagon wheels throbbing copperheads a whistling bungholes no spleen splitters whisker biscuits honky lighters hoosker do's hoosker don'ts cherry bombs nips of dazers with or without the scooter stick the fireworks. Oh, I said maybe this movie ends with him blowing his house up and killing his entire family because I thought that was what was going <laughs> Because yeah. the last big one falls down the fireplace and then comically whizzes around the house bouncing off things before finally blowing up their tree. <laughs> Which would have burned the house down. Like, yeah. they wouldn't... He goes, I'll get the fire extinguisher. I'm like, it's a that's a mighty blaze you're putting out with a single fire extinguisher. Well, the tree's going up really quickly. Have you been watering it? <laughs> yeah. 
You sure you've been watering that thing? It went up awfully fast. Fucking dick. He's a giant dick. Um, uh, but it turns out, but it actually does like burn a hole in the side of their house because yes. the, the fire department shows up and there's like a giant but the, scorch. But the sheriff is there and he knows about the tree that right. was taken. Right. And the, so he shows them the uh, burnt uh, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. And it's like, we know what you did. And yeah. Like, but I, 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 I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then this is where everybody leaves. Like both of the fam- both of their families have gone to a motel, right? Because they're like, "Fuck this! You guys got to be act like children. We're leaving." Which I don't blame them. No, we don't fit in the tiny little boxes on your Christmas calendar. Oh, don't. That night, Matthew Broderick is at home, that are like fixing the house or something. I don't know because he's home alone now, and he has a Christmas movie on. And I don't even know what movie this is. I can look it up and figure out. I'm sure it's a real movie. It looks like it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I love this. It's one of my favorite things in this whole movie. The movie decides to let a different, presumably better movie, deliver the message of their movie in their movie. <laughs> <laughs> writers writers lesson 101 if at one point you feel you're failing to some degree take somebody else's shit pull a different better movie put it in your movie and be like what they said <laughs> that's so good it's so stupid I love it oh I love it so much um, so then he decides that he needs to go <laughs> Imagine, can you imagine if like and, and, and both these films are good but can you imagine if uh they were doing the matrix and there's a, a point where uh neo's like trying to you know g- uh get people to rise up against yeah, the machines yeah, or something yeah. like that and they just show a clip from braveheart <laughs> it's just it's just it's Mel, Mel Gibson giving the speech. it's like we need, we need to fight up and get rise up against yeah. these machines and this is why and then it just it's play <laughs> Every movie needs to do that. It's just pull <laughs> scenes from other better mo- not that the Braveheart's better than the Matrix, but other better movies and just play them at relevant moments. Be like, we didn't feel like writing anything, so that <laughs> just what they said. Oh my god, it's so good. That is really oh, I started doing that. Just every movie just slap in. Oh fuck, okay. Um <laughs> I can, I, can see, I can see them like doing that like so, something like that it's like they're coming up with a big climactic yeah. moment yeah. and it just brings up a smartphone and goes <laughs> can you turn it up a little louder I can't hear it in the back <laughs> oh yeah that was my favorite part of the whole thing though when that happened I was losing it was the only time I laughed in the whole movie I was like are you fucking kidding me that they may take our lives um so they go he teams up with them and they go and they light the entire and these people are on super meth yes. to get all <laughs> yes. this done all of this done yeah in a night or whatever in a few hours they light the entire outside of the motel without their families noticing somehow mm-hmm. but then create a path path of lights and like you know like trellises and shit from the motel all the way to, to Danny, their house Danny the, DeVito's house Danny DeVito's house Matthew Broderick's currently has a hole, hole in it a giant hole from the fire yes to Danny DeVito's house where they have a fully cooked meal from the rest of, from the cookbook yeah the cookbook that uh, this is the why city. they're on super meth yes because they got all that done and cooked this meal and wait for it Matthew Broderick feeling bad about all this stuff that happened with Danny DeVito called like a thousand people yeah everybody in town to show up with lights yeah and when you think they're tired the meth kicks in more because they redo this entire lighting set because he took down all of his lights they set it all back up i was like that would take 
days. <laughs> like that would take forever, but they do it in like 30 minutes. But yeah, they cook the entire a bunch of recipes from her cookbook. And as a And she says they're her own recipes. We made a few things from your new cookbook. But I was like, one of them's just fried chicken. I'm like, other people have done fried chicken. What are you? <laughs> I was so mad at this movie. I got I got a friend who's a manager of of a whole bunch of like of a, he basically he's a manager of a, of a whole bunch of high school students at a, a store, and he says this, and and this is just reflective of a lot of people. When you have a whole bunch of people together, the pr productivity is at the same level of the lowest productive yeah. person there. Yes. So when you have a bunch of people working on something, what happens to the quality of work? Oh, it would be a nightmare. Terrible. Yeah. It would be terrible. To be fair, they didn't recreate the crazy awesome like sequence, or did they? Not not quite the same. Like the crazy like television screen lighting rig he had on his roof. It's just really just hung a shit ton of lights all over the house. People had like chandeliers and stuff. They're <laughs> showing up with chandeliers. But yeah, no, it would. Like I said, with all those people there, it would be a cluster. Like nothing would get done. It would just be a nightmare. But they get all the house lit up, and then they turn it on. Big moment. Because they're everybody's all happy. They turn they it on. Have, they even have MTV there. Happy holidays, everyone. Sujin Park coming to you live from Cloverdale, Massachusetts. That's yes. their big Sujin role. Park is there, baby! MTV, what? <laughs> I was like, why the fuck is MTV covering this? <laughs> Sujin Park was a real, legitimate journalist. Why the fuck is she there? Um, was, I don't think she's dead. I just, <laughs> it's like, I don't think MTV does that well, anymore. I mean, it's MTV. It's like, what do they do now? Is it is Jersey Shore still a thing, or are they just Teen Mom? <laughs> that was the, the like most out of touch, like old man thing I've ever I heard you say. <laughs> I remember MTV when they played Beavis and Butthead in actual music videos. <laughs> no, 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 that was the most out of touch old man thing. I knew MTV back when they actually played music on MTV. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I, yeah, I don't know what they do now. I don't watch it. I don't, so I couldn't yeah. tell you. So they kick the lights on all together and then they immediately go out. Cause they've like, there, well, there are, no, not only do they go out, there are sparks, there are massive sparks everywhere. And I was like, now, now your house is going to burn down. Now for people who do, who know electricity, what does that tell you? Something blue, something overloaded mm -hmm. or, you know, something bad happened. It wasn't just, yeah. That's not. It's usually indicative of a surge. Some sort of something. And yeah. there are beautiful little devices called fuses, which are suicide yeah. devices. Which once they, they're that's what they're there for. They're there to blow so that you don't. Yeah. And then once that's done, your circuit's broken. Yeah. Like, like it's no longer. It's no longer an open. It, it, it's, it's no longer done. closed circuit. Clo yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, no longer a closed circuit. You now have an open circuit that's going nowhere. Yeah. So you would have to go figure out what fuse is blue or what blue and then replace them and blah, blah, blah. But that's not what happens. No. It just got unplugged. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. No. But while the lights are out, they all get out their cell phones and they're like, wee. And then they start. And then they start singing. And they, I was like waiting this whole goddamn movie. I was like, so help me God movie. Every terrible thing about this movie. But if you cast Kristen Chenoweth in your fucking movie and she doesn't sing, I will come find you and fight you. Luckily, the very end of the film, she sings like two lines, but. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. <laughs> and this is this is the scene where Danny DeVito is going in for the kiss and he's like, no. No. But I was so mad. I'm like, you have Kristen fucking Chenoweth. I don't know if you're aware of this. She's famous mostly for being on Broadway. She has won Tonys. She's been nominated for like a billion Tonys. She was in uh, the Charlie Brown one. She won a Tony for that. She was in the fucking Wicked. Because I know you. Because I Here to perform the Oscar-nominated, gorgeously empowering song, Let It Go, from the Oscar-winning animated movie, Frozen, 
please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazim. But not only do they turn this on and it like creates the most the brightest oh, thing yeah. possible. So when the little fuck stain uh, kid plugs <laughs> in, I hate that. <laughs> the little kid plugs well, it the like, lights in. It goes in and not only do they see it from that that command post, it literally creates a beam of light that blinds them. It blinds the, it blinds them from their computer screen. <laughs> Seeing the light on their computer screen hurts their eyes. God oh my damn. God, <laughs> fucking A. Yes, yes, the house is clearly visible to space. <laughs> In my opinion, uh, this yeah, movie it's sucks. it's bad, bad. It has like a six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's a cheap. It's not. It's you know. I mean, uh, holiday or like Christmas movies, holiday movies, you tend to have a lower bar, anyways. Mm -hmm. And this is. It's just the you know a shitty little like. The only thing it's gr the only my only favorite part. If if we could just make nothing but a character study on Danny DeVito and Matthew Broderick as yeah. being complete assholes who ruin their families, <laughs> ruin lives, their families' lives, that would yeah. be much better. Yeah. Yeah, because you pointed out where before we started recording, they're still Danny DeVito, still broke, still massive, so debt. much debt. <laughs> yeah, and, and both of them are facing felonies. Yeah, both of them are going to prison for a while. <laughs> everybody in the town should hate Matthew Broderick because all he's been is an asshole to everybody this whole movie. But yeah, so like really nothing is fixed. But you know they had one good night where they sang Kumbaya and the lights came on, so that's cool. So, yes. No, I. that's bad, bad. That movie's not good. It is not a good film. But it's different. It actually qualifies, unlike Thanks Killing, because they didn't intentionally make it bad. They True. tried to make a good, fun family comedy for Christmas. And it just falls flat. And it's flat. just boring and not funny mm -hmm. and, and, and unbelievable in every way possible. Even, even by the standards of forgiving like yeah it's a comedy it's gonna be unbelievable none of it you can't well, something happened something happened with matthew broderick in the 90s where he just became dad humor yeah and then it just from yeah there. well he had to he had to morph his humor along with his dad bod so he was just like <laughs> also <laughs> this is coming out december 8th it's your first of two Christmas episodes. I'm going to squeeze back Spoiler. into this again. Ugh. I'm going to have to come out with something more festive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, until then, if you want, you can check us out on Patreon. Uh, we have... We're, I'm, I'm making it a goal to release episodes early for patrons, at least a day or two early, so you'll get the episode. Not every time, I can't promise, because I don't always get them done in time, but if I get yes. them done, you will get them early on Patreon, or uh, if you're a patron, and that's because all levels of patrons. We care for you. Yes. Uh, like this Thanksgiving killing episode I put up Wednesday, and everybody else didn't get it till Friday. So, um, there's that. We also have our podcast where we go on there and talk about stuff. Uh, I like to think that's the people's reward on Friday, or to a degree, is uh, that after they survive Black Friday yeah. shopping, being trampled to death and fighting over a uh, Samsung TV that they yeah. get to come and watch. Our little they show. get to come watch Thanks Killing and want to kill themselves <laughs> afterwards. Uh, I like how everybody in the comments is like, you guys seem so sad. <laughs> like, yeah, it There's a reason for that. It wasn't good. It really wasn't good. Also, just wanted to announce the store is ready. We're ready to do it. Our t-shirts are available to patrons only initially. You can get those in before Christmas. Yeah, hopefully. I don't want to make that oh, promise oh, shit, necessarily. Shit. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, there will be a... I'll have a link on our patron page for all of our, all of our levels of patrons. Um, for the record, it is a very limited run on the grounds the, that we didn't know how many we would Yeah, sell. and what we're going to do is we're going to do a different... Through a t-shirt service or something later, so you'll be able to get some different... We'll figure it out. Yep. Um, so very limited. We're also going to include a little hand sign something or another a little extra gift for all of our patrons. So patrons will get first run after that. If we still have some left, we'll open it up to everybody and then hopefully sell them all out. And then we'll get to our next line of shirts eventually down the road. But that's that. Just wanted to let you know it is happening. The t-shirts are about to be available Whoa. to all of our lovely patrons. Yay. That, that was our audience. Right? Yeah. Yay. But they, but don't don't fret. Eventually, they will, we will have more different stuff and maybe other stuff. We'll talk about it later. 
Also, if you want, you can check my podcast out. This film is lit. We talk about films that are based on books. Uh, this episode coming up, we're doing Chronicles of Narnia for Christmas, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. We also just did Shrek, and I think we have something else coming. I can't remember. we got a million of them going. Have a good... Well, nope. We'll see you one more time before Christmas. <laughs> I have nothing to plug. This is the only thing in my life. I, I'm sad. That's not true. You just can't tell the good people about the other things in your life. <laughs> Because we don't want you stuck in us. Um, we'll see you one more time before Christmas on the 22nd. Until then, guys, keep watching movies. Just don't fucking watch Deck the Halls. It's terrible. Man.